on today's video, we're going to talk about barbarian chaining, how you can spend AP for one barbarian and end up taking two or even three or even 40. That is right. We're going to talk about barbarian chaining, how it works, which commanders are the best ones to do it with, what kind of pairings you can use, and also show you a few tips and advice on how to move barbarians and make sure you're moving them the correct way so you maintain their attention, you don't waste your AP, as well as how to find locations with the best amount of barbarians chunked into one area, which is what you really want for a successful chain. So sit back, enjoy the video, and uh, yeah. YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. Today we're gonna talk about barbarian chaining, and more specifically, I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna catch all these three barbarians for the price of one. Give you guys a few tips and advice on how to move on the field and all that good stuff, like I said. Let's start talking about what AoE is and what barbarian chaining really means. Some of these commanders you have, the king of it being YSG, have skills which are area of effect skills, meaning anyone within that area gets hit up to a certain target, in YSG's case, five targets. Now, his first skill starts as a fan-shaped skill, but once you expertise him, it becomes a circular skill, which is very, very, very good. But there are also commanders such as Ethelflaed, who has a nice little forward-facing fan up to five enemies skill, very, very used nowadays for chaining as well. And before her, back in the day, the master of chaining in the in the epics department was our friend Sun Tzu, who also hits in a fan-shaped area a maximum of five targets. This one, however, is not front-facing. That's important to notice, but we're going to talk about that later. So we've reached our barbarians with our march that consists of Richard and YSG and a mix of infantries and range because, honestly, I was kind of low on bows after it's still recovering from Lost Kingdom. But anyway, the way this works is pretty simple. You pick a Barbarian, and you want to make sure that your army keeps that Barbarian and the next Barbarian, at least, well, the next one or two or however more Barbarians you want, within the range of the AoE of YSG. Now, you can reach situations like this one where it's cool, we picked up two Barbarians, but how do we get the third one? The most important thing to know about Barbarians is that they lose interest in you after a certain period of time. For the Barbarian, once he came into war mode in here, this is his return spot. So he will move with you for a little bit, but if you try to run away with him, try to make him move too, more, too far, he will lose interest, the battle will be over, you'll get a report without, the, without killing him, his health bar will reset, and he will march all the way back to the starting zone of where your war was. So the idea behind chaining a barbarian is to be able to move him without him losing interest in you while getting closer to the next target and making sure it is within AOE range. Now, unfortunately, this barbarian is a bit low on health, so getting here might be a little tough. You can see that when you're facing the command, the, the target you're doing damage while you're not facing it you're doing counter damage and you're really relying on that because you want to have your next barbarian still alive in order to continue on so the first technique i'm going to show you guys is call is kind of like zigzagging on the map now for some reason it's been really laggy today really really laggy and i haven't been able to see the marches move properly which is making things so much harder but ideally we're standing here and now we're going to keep moving left and right and you really don't want to be stopping. You don't want to let the attack happen. You want to keep counter damage at all time. But when you are moving in a zigzag pattern, more often than not, the Barbarian will get a couple of hits on you. If not, get a lot of hits on you. If you're zigzagging correctly, he'll get a lot of hits on you. And when he keeps hitting you, all that happens is keeps interest in you. And because of this very aggravating lag... I don't see where we're at. I don't know how to continue this. So unfortunately, this guy will go down before I was even able to move. But you can see how we moved from here to here slowly and steadily by zigzagging. The idea behind this is if you pretend for a moment that the Barbarian is standing right here, or let's say it's standing right here for the sake of demonstration. Let's put him, uh, let's make our friend all in one a Barbarian for a moment. So you're fighting this Barbarian right here. 
and you want to keep moving in that in this direction. If you go a little bit further away from it, to the left or to the right, whichever side you choose, he still stays within range to hit you. And then you start moving left and right within the range of the barbarian, but also forward. And what ends up happening is it'll slowly move forward with you while hitting you. And because it's hitting you, it doesn't lose interest in you. It loses interest in you when it stops hitting you and it has to move for too long. And when he moves from for too long, it's game over. So we're going to go up to this little cluster, which looks a little nicer. And hopefully our friend uh, some dog won't get hit by mistake. We have a nice little chain happening here. One, two, three, four, unless these guys start moving and making things harder. So I showed you guys a zigzagging moving technique, which we're, we're going to try it in here as well. There is another very good way to make a barbarian follow you from pretty much for a really, really long distance, almost for free. And that is your positioning when you start attacking. So when you choose how to do your chain, you got to figure out the order. And so the order for me was very natural to start from here, because once I start from here, I can go through the Barbarian almost to here pretty much for free and then slowly drag him to here. So let's show you how to do that. So we're hitting a Barbarian from the opposite side of where we want to be. And then when I make this move all the way to here, two full kilometers, if you take a look, you'll see that the Barbarian never stops hitting me. He's not really moving yet, but he will be making moves once. He will be making moves once we get there. And unfortunately, because of this lag, I'm having a, such a hard time today. Very, very bad day to make that choice. And now we're going to start zigzagging. So we're on the, on, the right, on the left. Let's move right. And by moving right, again, he keeps hitting me at all time, never losing interest. And we already placed ourselves in the range right here of this guy. And here comes the AOE, hopefully. And bam, our second barbarian in the chain is in. Now... Because of something that I explained earlier, the fact that we are facing him, where he's taking the damage while he's taking the counter damage, this Barbarian will live, outlive this one probably for sure. Most likely for sure. Um, there are very, very, very random places where if you catch a Barbarian that's much weaker after as a secondary, it sometimes dies first. But right here, once this Barbarian dies, it's time to start figuring out how do we make, we make our way this way. Why am I making my way this way and not this way? His health bar is not enough for me to make it all the way here, but there's definitely talk about me making it here by using that same exact walk through technique I showed you guys. Two kilometers plus minus this way. And as soon as that one at the bottom goes down, I'm gonna straight cross this guy to make sure we get, we get there as quick as possible. Now, another quick thing you guys can do, which is super, super useful. Keep your eyes on the rage meter and get your next movement already set up and ready to go. Unfortunately, because of the lag, it's going to be impossible for me to demonstrate this to you. But the reason I have Yi Song Ye as a secondary commander is this one right here. The first commander casted Richard. Bam. So the next attack is going to be AOE. I took the risk of moving a little further and making him follow me because I knew that that would happen right there. Unfortunately, I was just too far. There goes another first Commander hit, let's move this Barbarian on a little further and hopefully the AOE will still happen. He's very low on health and it did happen and we catch the third one just in time. So you can see exactly how this works. You slowly and steadily start dragging these Barbarians. I prefer going through Barbarians than zigzagging. Zigzagging is a little tough. It takes some time to get used to and when there is lag, it's really hard to keep up with. But yeah, the really good way to get this done is zigzagging. We're going to try. I don't think we have it in us be primarily because of the lag. But if you keep your movement, first of all, at one to two kilometers at a time and then wait for the Barbarian to hit you a couple turns, you can really, really make progress on the map with a very, very little sudden movements just like this one. We started in these trees right here. Let's see this lag, man. This lag. Look at how, how I'm teleporting on the map. Lilith Gaming, my friends, come on. Help me out. Let's see if we can uh, if we can get this to work still, even though zigzagging with this lag is a nightmare. We're slowly moving him. He was in here when we started the fight, and we're already moving him a significant amount. And the whole time he's been hitting us, keeping his attention on us, and look at the help that Lilith sent us. 
This level 35 makes his way closer to us. So let's make some slow, sudden, mo slow movement. See if we can get him within the range. Hopefully he's in that range right now. There it is. Is that enough? It is enough. And we chain a fourth barbarian. Chaining barbarians is super, super useful. We're not going to go for one more because really there is nothing nearby. But you saw how we brought this barbarian from here to here. And it was enough for the AoE to hit this barbarian too. And one, two, three, four, we picked up four barbarians for the price of one. And I'll show you exactly how that looks like once these barbarians go down. Where should you look for barbarians for chaining? If you're trying to chain very, very big numbers, I recommend looking for barbarians anywhere within corners of mountains. So barbarians are AI, they're NPCs. They have a certain path that they go. They sometimes go, they randomly generate direction. So up, up, left, right, up, up, left, right, down, left, up, down. That's all like random. But once they get stuck in here, once they start getting close to this, these zones, all of a sudden, there is no down and there is no left. So more often than not, this friend right here, the likelihood of him getting out of this area is slim to none because he'll, he'll have to have quite a lot of ups without any lefts and without any rights along the way or without any downs, sorry. And really what ends up happening is that in the corners of mountains as well as corners of the full kingdom you will find something like this look at this corner how stacked it is right here we are seeing one two three four five six seven eight barbarians right here just really quickly really close you can very very easily chain one two three four you probably don't want to go this way and then make your way here slowly and steadily you can catch five if you catch five you definitely catch six and then you can keep going on and on there are so, so, so many ways to get this done. And the unfortunate thing is if you don't have YSG maxed out, which is by the way, why YSG is so useful because you can do all this on top of holding buildings and fighting on the open field. If you don't have YSG, you can still use Ethelflaed and still use um, Sun Tzu. I've never used them, so I don't really know how to AO, how to chain with Ethelflaed or with um, with Sun Tzu. If you guys want me to learn, to ask people that I know that do this very often with those commanders to teach me how to do it and make a video so you guys know how to do it as well, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'll definitely take some time to learn it, to master it, and then show it to you guys. Let's talk about the report really quickly. We spent the AP for one fight, 40 AP, well, technically 50 AP because he's not a peacekeeping commander, 50 AP for one fight. That fight was here. While that fight was going on, this guy joined the fight, and then this guy joined the fight, and then this guy joined the fight. But them joining the fight doesn't come at my cost. It comes at their cost. They chose to come into the fight. And so the, there is no AP spent. You'll see in a second that we went down 50 AP and that's that. If you want to go back a little bit in the video and you'll see AP never goes down as we hit these. And the best part of this is we spent 50 AP for 4.6K XP and a little bit of rewards. But guess what? We got 4.2 more for and a little bit more rewards for free. No AP spent. We got 4.5K points, XP, a lot of nice little speed ups and resources for free. And even 15 arrows of resistance for free who can say this is not worth it this is the best way to hunt barbarians and just to wrap things up before we lock this video out this uh, we have one of our r4s that i'm going to use as an example none other than box box has been trying to stay in top 20 he's not really caring to be number one number two he just wants to get the skin and so he is in top 10 he's been here for quite some time from the beginning of lost kingdom but the way he did that is straight up AP savings, straight up chaining left and right on the screen right now. You guys are seeing. So yeah, Box, last time I talked to him, he said he had like over 150 AP remaining and that he rarely uses AP when he goes out hunting. He just spends some time to go to these areas that have a chunk of barbarians and uses all his free AP getting massive barbarians. My understanding from him is his fastest chain, his biggest chain ever is I think 38 or 40 barbarians. 38 or 40 barbarians at the price of one. How crazy is that? 
Anyway, I hope I found this video informative, helpful, useful. If you have any questions, if things are still not understood to you, leave me a comment down below. I'll try to help you out as much as possible. Recapping really quickly, you're gonna find barbarians in corners of either areas or mountains or kingdoms and zones and whatnot. You wanna zigzag two kilometers at a time, going left, right, left, right, but also up and making sure the barbarian keeps hit, hitting you at all time along the way. You don't want him to lose interest in you. You wanna walk through barbarians, right? So you want to make sure that if there's a barbarian here and a barbarian here that you hit from this side and then you walk through this barbarian to get to this one. If you can hit from the center and get them both, awesome. But if not, you guys saw that working right there in this little chain we got in this video. Finally, commanders, I really, really, really recommend using YSG if you can, and of course, Richard. The reason for that, you're gonna be doing a lot of killing and a lot of fighting, and you really want a lot of healing. So you want to have healing in your pair, but you also want to have, of course, as a secondary, in my opinion, a AOE commander as someone who is uh, doing the second cast. And so you can do what I showed you, let the first commander cast, then, may then move, and as soon as you get and you stop and you get hit, the AOE gets procced as well. Anyway, I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you for liking, subscribing, commenting, being awesome. All your continuous support is always appreciated. And I'll see you sooner rather than later. Take care. Peace.